I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive in my brand new family dream car. Mercedes E55 AMG Wagon, my new dream car. <laughs> this is pretty good, eh? <laughs> this is pretty nice. And we're going way too fast. Horsepower and torque. 469 horsepower. 516 pound-feet of torque from a hand-built 5.4-liter supercharged V8. Not 4-matic. No, it's not. It is rear-wheel drive only. And it's not a 63 because it's an older AMG. That's right. So it's a 55. This is the generation right before the 63. So this is your wagon? Yeah, I actually bought this. This is my new family car. Why? Ever since we first drove that E63S wagon, it left a real impression on me. We said it was the best car in the world back then, and it instantly became my dream car. I even convinced Mercedes to give me one when my son was born, and his first ride home was in an E63S wagon. I also got to drift them at the AMG Winter Sporting Event. Mercedes Canada, if you want to ship my car to Manitoba and let me drift it on the lake, let me know. So I have a lot to say in this video. Yuri's going to be silent for the majority of this video. I don't even want to say anything. Sit back and relax, because I have a lot to say. This is my dream car because I couldn't afford the expensive one, but now that I have a family, I got a son, this is the perfect car, no compromise, and I imported it from Japan for several reasons, which I'll get to. This one cost me $25,000 Canadian, which is very cheap. That's the purchase price or the import price? That is my total all-in purchase price, let registered, on the road, plated, legal, everything. In Canada? Yes. Wow, that's pretty good, 25K exactly. Canadian? So when these pop up for sale, which is very rare, and I'll get to that later, they're about 30 to 40 grand US, which is a lot more money than this. So the rarity, the availability, and the actual price of them in North America was what drove me to look in Japan for them. So this is my first time importing a car from Japan. I had never done it, I've always wanted to. So I reached out to a collection auto. He imports these things all day. E55 wagons and RS4 wagons are like his bread and butter, but this guy can get anything and I would highly recommend it for several reasons. Yeah, I didn't find out what you bought until today. You told me you bought a car in Japan. I'm like, all right, I'm expecting some like Land Cruiser or like a Toyota Crown or like some Lexus version of a Toyota Crown. Or, or like a then, Nissan Stagia Skyline And, and then thing. you surprise me with an AMG wagon. And here's Yuri's genuine first reaction to seeing it after I kept it secret for months. What is it? It's a... Oh, this guy got an AMG wagon. Oh! I got a wagon. That's pretty sick, dude. <laughs> What? So back to a collection auto. The process was seamless from start to finish. It took a couple months, but it was definitely worth the wait. They have a team of people in Japan who actually physically inspect the cars before he actually purchases them because the auction grades are so poor these days that you just can't trust them anymore. You have to have people that are on the ground that can check out the car. Does he auction them from that Instagram page that shows all like the webcam photos that's of the cars same, that are docked? Yeah, I have photos of my car from, from, that, from, from that, that angle. From that Instagram? Yeah, yeah, that's sick. That, and that's and I'll get to, to why that's different. I have so many things to You have to so say, many things to get to, you're so gonna at things. least forget six of them, but that's Zero. okay. Zero. Check the comments for everything we forgot. So a Collections Auto's Japanese team sent me a ton of photos of the car sitting in Japan after they inspected it, after they had already purchased it. The only modification that I noticed that this car had, underbody wise, was that it had a resonator delete. So let's take a listen to the outside. It sounds pretty good, definitely muscly, but not too loud perfect for being a family car. And from the photos, you probably noticed that this has different wheels now. I did get the original wheels after the car landed here. I found them available locally because they're just E55 wheels. But those original wheels looked pretty gangster. They were 20s, but the tires were popped on them. So I, it wasn't what I wanted for this car. It, the ride quality would have been terrible. And what tires did you put on your E55 dream car? The Continental Extreme Contact Sports. And then you're gonna drive this in winter too, right? Yes, I will. And you're gonna put on the Viking Contact 7s, of course. I still haven't done the uh, the choice of my wheels and stuff. This is my temporary current setup. I may do some aftermarket wheels for the summer and some stocks for the winter. I'll figure that all out. Monoblocks. Monoblocks would be sick. And then the other mods. Uh, so the front grill has been swapped out for a more modern one. I think it's like an eBay grill. 
it took me months of staring at it to kind of I do like it now I still don't love it I may go back to the original chrome slat version with the raised Mercedes star emblem we'll see Maybe I'll just buy them and then swap back and forth. You can swap the grill and just not have the raised emblem. I could, but I like the raised emblem because it's very classy. I'm conflicted. I, I literally have no idea which way you should go. I know, because some of the cars in this 55 series generation, they did have this type of grill. So let us let, let me know in the comments what you think. Which grill should I go with? The OEM one or just leave this one on? So overall, the process of importing it took a couple months. Had to wait for it to be on the boat. I had some fun facts. My car was on the same boat as the first GR Corolla. So people sent me photos of the GR Corolla thinking that it was my car. It was not my car, this is my car. So once the car landed here, there's a couple things that a collection auto had to take care of. It did have an aftermarket radio with Japanese frequencies. So he got me a Sony Apple CarPlay unit with Android Auto and it works really well. And the nicest surprise when they hooked it up was that I actually had a rear backup camera. It's an aftermarket one, but it plugged right into this radio. So now I have a backup camera. Yeah, yeah, backup cameras are the best. And this also has Sirius XM satellite radio. However, the tuner is not plugged in, but because this has Apple CarPlay Android Auto, I have been using Sirius XM through the app because I could just use it through CarPlay. Visit our link, go get Sirius XM for yourself and use the app if you have an old car like this. Yes, it works really well. A classic car. Technically it is, it's insured through Haggerty, so. And the cool part was that they were even able to retain my Harman Kardon system, which apparently has to be done through several adapters and the sound quality from these speakers is amazing. I'm so glad that the system works and apparently this was an option. I think it's part of an option with the sunroof. There are several options that I didn't get, which I'll get to later in the video. Oh, and in case you are wondering, a collection auto is not paying me to say anything nice about his dealership or anything like that. He's just a really good guy. I would highly recommend using him for all your Japanese purchases for imports. Uh, he gave me an all in price. It was fair and I just paid the price. Nice. That's how I got the car. Much easier than doing sponsored content. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to a collection auto. Now, to explain why I bought this in Japan, they only sold under 200 of these in the United States. So Canada wouldn't even tell me, Mercedes Canada, thank you for not getting me this information. I tried to get the sales numbers for Canada and they wouldn't tell me that. So I think it's like single digits, maybe like 10, maybe 12 like tops. And then how much does it cost if you wanna buy one from USA and bring it up here? So I looked at cars and bids. There had been a couple for about 30 to 40 grand US, which translates to like $50,000 Canadian. That's big money. Obviously lower mileage. This is a slightly higher mileage one, 160K. I don't care about that. I didn't want the nicest example because a collection actually does pick up way nicer examples than this, but I didn't want that being my family car. You wanted something that you could get boogers and crumbs on. Exactly, and not worry about it. And if you're not gonna buy an E55 wagon in Canada through a collection auto, tsp.truecar.com has some new and used E-Class wagons. And then since this is from Japan, don't they drive on the left side, left hand side of the road? So shouldn't this be right hand drive? Yes, but a cool thing about Japanese cars is that they can actually have the option of left hand and right hand depending on the car. And a lot of the luxury makes like Mercedes, BMW, Audi and stuff like that, a lot of them are more prestigious to own in left hand drive in Japan apparently from what I've read online. Nice. So that's pretty cool. You may have noticed the Yanez badge or how do you say it? Yanasi? Yeah, so Yanasi, Yanez, uh, reach out to me, shout out you guys because Yanez is the oldest dealer group in Japan, or one of the oldest ones. So they have the exclusive rights to import Mercedes, BMWs, Audis as like the official dealer of Japan. Uh, well, however it's pronounced, the way I say it is wrong, guaranteed, so. I I'm not sure, we're probably both wrong. And driving this around, I've been driving for a couple days, I haven't owned this for too long. I've been getting so much attention, like I did not expect the amount of attention that this would get. I wanted a subtle car for my family car, this is, I would say this is fairly subtle, especially in black. What do you think? Uh, yeah, this is subtle, but I mean, for everyone who's a car person, like yeah. I think we made these wagons pretty popular with our millions of wagon views. True, so at least I'm getting the right kind of attention. It's like car people and you know, people are just really excited. It's mostly guys staring at me and pointing and giving me thumbs up and stuff, so that's cool. And then they don't even know that this is imported from Japan. I, I don't think people know that this is rarer than most Ferraris with Lamborghinis. And I also wanna give a shout out to a bunch of YouTube channels because I had several months to watch YouTube videos on this car before I actually got it. So Alex from Legit Street Cars, I was talking to him, a really nice guy. He's got a 700 horsepower Whipple supercharged wagon. Like, definitely check out his channel. Auto Top NL, he's doing like Autobahn top speed runs in one of these. 
shout out. Like that is the coolest thing. Like watching your own car just get sent to the limit. It's really awesome. How about Doug DeMiro? Did you find all the quirks and features through his video? He has a sedan video. Uh, I did watch it and he did point out some pretty funny stuff. And then the last person I want to shout out is AMG Meister. He's got really good high quality videos about basically any E55 W211 chassis or kind of all AMGs and he kind of compares them to newer ones. So very good channels. So now into what this car actually is. This is back in the era of Mercedes when it was Daimler Chrysler. Like it was- Wait, is this a charger? Yeah, dude, yeah, dude. <laughs> okay, so let me get to that. This is basically a German Hellcat wagon. Yeah, because, I guess you're right. <laughs> because this is on the same platform as the new Charger, well, current Charger, Challenger, <laughs> which has been used from 2005, 2003, same platform. That's funny. It has a V8, and it, it's supercharged. The supercharger is made by the same company that makes the Hellcat supercharger, which is IHI. This is actually a German Hellcat, and it's the same style of supercharger. That's funny. Yeah, this is a German Hellcat wagon. Are you going to make this wagon go wee? Yeah, so I kind of want to. Let's. I'm just gonna floor it right now. You hear like a slight whistle, but not much. I wouldn't mind a little bit more of that. You can get it. I've seen it through the aftermarket. VRP and a bunch of other companies have solutions to that. So we'll see. I don't want to ruin this. Don't though. do it. So this is in the Mercedes era where badge numbers actually meant something. Like an E55 is a 5.5 liter. It's a 5.4 V8, but it meant something. Like the next one was an E63 with a 6.2, 6.3 liter V8. So that's what's cool about these Mercedes in this generation. And this is before it was called the Mercedes AMG. It's a Mercedes E55 AMG. And uh, you learned just recently what compressor meant? <laughs> Not recently, like a couple years ago, but okay. <laughs> I, I was like, what did that mean Like growing up seeing them? I'm like, is it turbo or is it supercharged? Supercharged. It's just a way to say compressing the air or whatever. Well, I guess it and must mean just... compressor supercharged in German. I didn't yeah, actually look yeah. that part up. So the next thing, this five-speed transmission, it is ancient, it is okay, it slowed a downshift, I'm gonna floor it. Not the worst, but it's very torquey from this engine. So this transmission is extra special. This can handle 1,000 newton meters of torque. This is one of Mercedes' best engine and transmission combos they have ever made for its reliability, apparently. So this transmission was in the Dodge Charger Pursuit vehicle, the police pursuit vehicle, up until recently. It's been in commercial vehicles. It's been in the Mercedes SLR. That's what this had. The, the Mercedes SLR McLaren shares the same transmission as this, and even the Maybach. And this was never offered in a manual transmission. No, and then even the Charger uh, SRT8s got this same transmission. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And an even crazier car that shared this transmission that you would never guess, Porsche 911, the Tiptronic one. Oh, like the, like the bad that, ones? Like the back 996, in the day? yeah. Nice. Yeah, so that's a pretty fun fact. Apparently it's even got the Mercedes stamp on it, so I'm like, oh, that's cool. But they're not even the same company. No, so they had to buy the transmission. Interesting. Exactly. So now on to how special this engine is. It's the M113K engine. It is handcrafted. The signature is there. So shout out my engine builder. Thank you for allowing this car to keep going to 167,000 kilometers so far. So this is the first supercharged one? First and only. Because the one oh, after- turbo, went to, yeah, yeah. No, no, the one after oh. was naturally aspirated. Then and it then went to turbo. turbo. Yeah. So this is the only one with a supercharged V8. Interesting. Interesting yeah. how they snuck that in there between- But the supercharger is kind of crazy. So. It has a electromechanically controlled clutch. So here's the thing. When I'm driving around normally, it's actually not supercharging. So there's gonna be zero whine because the supercharger isn't engaged. So it's only when you floor it. So it's a clutch type of system. So now if I'm gonna floor it, you can listen and kind of feel the engagement point. That's interesting. Yeah. So it's supposed to save you on gas. There are aftermarket ones where they do like a normal style pulley and then you're always supercharging, but then that kind of has its own trade-offs as well. But it's cool that this has that. Interesting technology for 2005. Exactly. And apparently in 2003, because that's when this generation came out, it won the world best engine or something like that. One of those performance engines of the year things. But when this did come out as a sedan, it was the fastest sedan in the world which automatically makes this the fastest wagon in the world, which is pretty cool. The, the power figures from this and cars at the time, Dodge Viper, 500 horsepower. Oh, this, that's, that's wild. Exactly. So 469 
is actually underrated because every other car in this 55 generation had about 500 horsepower. So they apparently had to give this less on paper so that you wouldn't buy the other ones or whatever because uh, the SL55 had like 490 or something like that. And, so, and did you consider any other wagons besides this wagon? No. I did look originally sort of at the uh, one right after this. Like I love these headlights, the style W211. I wanted the 63, but those are just way too expensive. How about V-Wagon? Uh, yeah, but they're also way too expensive. Are you worried about reliability for this engine? Not at all. Like, I've seen people on Instagram, on forums, with like 500,000 kilometers on this engine in trans combo. So this is the most reliable one I could have bought. So onto the suspension. It has factory adaptive air suspension. It is really comfortable. We're currently in sport two mode, so we can put this into comfort mode or sport one mode. I uh, can't really understand Japanese, so it's not helping. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> my gauge cluster is in Japanese. I did eventually figure out how to change it to English, but for Yuri's sake, I wanted to make it an authentic Japanese experience, which is really cool. I like that, I like that. So there are three modes of suspension, and there's actually a fourth mode to raise the suspension, so you can put in height high, and I have legitimately had to use that because whoever I bought this from in Japan, lowered this and I think he lowered it through the factory aromatic or um, the Mercedes star system because you can kind of hack it with its own system and tell it that it's lower than it is and I think the stance is perfect on this like the guy whoever owned this killed it I love what he did everything with his car are you gonna try to get a hold of him you have some information I, I'll see if I can there's a business card in the uh, in the glove box it's all in Japanese but I think it's like the CEO of Yanez or something so I, I don't know we'll see <laughs> we'll see but the suspension is really, really comfortable. In terms of modern suspensions, I would say it's not quite as comfortable as an S-Class. But what I really like about it is that it's way softer than the new E63s, uh, the wagons. Like, those are stiff now. Yeah, yeah, this is stiff. This has that nice old kind of 2005 Mercedes Floatier, AMG yeah, yeah. floaty vibe, and that's what I want from this car. And I just noticed something. Uh, your transmission, you've got these little paddles behind. Do you use them, or is it slow to shift? Uh, it's slow to shift. And then I noticed if you put it into D, I guess left and right is auto stick. Where did uh, that come from? Uh, well, you're... Just I, like my Prowler! It must have been inspired by the Daimler Chrysler Group. <laughs> we got this auto stick. It's great. Trust me, Germans, you'll love it. <laughs> and there are no drive modes in this car, but there are transmission modes. So I'm in sport mode. So if I press this M, C, S button, C is comfort. So it oh, starts in that. second. And then if I put in manual, now I'm full manual and it'll actually shift faster. So I'll go downshift, downshift, and then here. And it'll actually upshift. Whereas if you leave it in auto and then try and upshift, it won't upshift, yeah, but it'll downshift. The, the computers weren't good back then. Yeah, exactly. So there are aftermarket solutions to all this stuff. I don't think I'm gonna go through with all that. I just wanna keep this like a nice comfortable Yeah, car. this is your family car because all of your other cars are stupid. They're all and really And you can't stupid. drive your kid around in them. No, if you guys haven't seen our Corvette yet, we do a co-own a Corvette. Definitely watch that video. We, we co-own a Corvette, but it's Jacob's car. I haven't even driven yeah, it. Yeah, well, we just call it mine. So I have a really dumb car. This is now my fifth car. It's my most reasonable car other than my Fiesta ST. And this is uh, adding to my collection of V8s where all my cars are V8s. Well, from well Fiesta. your Fiesta ST is like straight up dangerous if you're putting a kid in it because it's <laughs> such a small car. Exactly. Like, your Raptor is probably better. But then if you're driving your kid around in here, what's this behind me? Uh, that's my new Britax seat. And how did you get that? You shouted out Britax. So thank you Britax for yeah. getting us these seats for our family cars. So this is the Advocate Click Tight with Safe Wash. How easy is it to install? Uh, ridiculous easy after I installed yours in your car I knew exactly what I was doing here it took me like literally 30 seconds to install it in this car yeah and you haven't tried a car seat that's difficult to install you are blessed yeah so thank you to Britax for sending us these seats I really like it my kid loves it he fell asleep in it instantly my kid loves this car which is the best there's so much room back there even for myself at six foot one and a half I have enough leg room obviously enough headroom this is the perfect family car it just it is does your dog go in the trunk uh, he will. He hasn't yet because I just want to get a cover for it because it's got a really nice carpet right now that I don't want to ruin, but he will. And that's why I bought this because this also has a net in the back that I can put up and then separate him from my son. Oh, and check this out. You see these rear headrests back there? Oh, you can drop them with the button. I got a button right here. Boom. Yeah, my, <laughs> my old family's Mercedes used to do that too. Sickest party trick. I love it. And then uh, I noticed you also have the original seal or like the blue wrap on the very back yeah so uh 17 years nobody's peeled that off so keep I, it another 17 bro just keep I, it. I think i should leave it on it would be so funny if i was the one to pull it off but that'll I be feel, a two million subscriber special if we ever get there <laughs> I, I would feel 
disrespectful to the Japanese people. So on to those things that I said I would talk about later because I'm actually going to talk about them in this video. There's a couple options that this car doesn't have that would have been really nice but not deal breakers to me because they're so rare to find because these wagons are already rare. I just wanted the wagon. Okay, I did see a previous Gen 1 with the seats in the back. Was this an option in this? Yes, so you can get the jump seats in the back of this. Mine does not have that totally not deal breaker i would never dare to put my kid back there anyways i just wanted my dog back that'd there. be sick for a camera car though i just take the trunk off hang out of the back it would be but this isn't our camera car maybe we'll buy a second one as a camera car the next thing since we're talking about the trunk it's not a powered trunk uh there was an option for a powered trunk where you just press and close it i think auto top nl he's got that so that's cool okay, next like realistically nothing's a deal breaker when you want <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. A 17 year old car. Exactly. You just take what you get. Uh, the next thing, which th this I really tried to look for, the rear seats. There is a version, there's an option for peasant blockers, like built in. Yeah. And it would have been the nicest. And I tried to really find that, but. You have to get some suction cup stuff. Yeah. Or, or nothing. But the tints are really dark, so it's also okay. My son fell asleep, so that was perfect. And the last one that I didn't get keyless entry, keyless go. I have to unlock the car with the key fob and then I have to start it with the key fob. What that also would have got me is push to start on top of the shifter. Well, at least you don't have to actually put a physical key in the door. To open exactly. It. That's that's fine for a 2005 or whatever like. Yeah. So that's really the only options that I didn't get and I'm totally okay with just would have been nice. Should we talk about the looks a little bit more? Yeah, we haven't really touched on the looks too much. Okay. Um, go so for it. The side view, I think it's pretty cool. Like a little awkward. The generation before this was more awkward, but it looks cool. And what's what's these uh, window things you got here? Uh, the, the JDM vent visors. Every Japanese car has this. Somebody in the comments, please explain this to me. I've tried to Google it. I, had, I didn't get a conclusive answer. I don't know if it's rain. I don't know if you guys don't like to use uh, AC and just have the windows cracked. I don't know if you're all smokers. But this car legitimately does not have smoke smells. Uh, you can verify yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. I'm very thankful for that. Now back to the looks, I think it looks stunningly gorgeous. The W211 is my favorite chassis for sure with the circle headlights. The E63 that came right after this, I think looks a little bit more aggressive, a little bit better. It got a slightly different bumper, but this is classier, just simpler. Was it this carbon fiber lip though? That's not, like, not supposed to be there. No, it's an aftermarket one, but it's actual real carbon fiber. I really like it. Like it looks really good. And the fact that I can raise the air suspension for the winter will save that front lip. Cool, not my style, but all right. And then your exhaust tips, I really, really like. Yeah, this is the era of the proper Mercedes AMG exhaust tips. We've got quad ovals. And then what would have been your ideal color? Uh, silver actually which is super boring, I know, but for a car that's gonna be driven all year round and it's the family car, and I don't wanna wash it all the time, black was my last choice. Well, you blew that one. I really did, but again, I wanted the price point, and then I, that's, I mean, that's, I didn't try to buy the cheapest and highest mileage one. Like, I don't try to do that, but I kind of ended up doing it again. It's not the highest mileage, but it's one of the higher mileages one, especially the ones that uh, E-Collection Auto's imported. He imports ones with like 50,000 all day. Well, you're going to beat this up as a family car, so like, who cares? Are you going to beat it up by doing burnouts and stuff too? Um, I kind of can't. What, so What do you mean? This is a rear wheel drive high horsepower German car. They can't do burnouts? Uh, not out of the box. So I have my ESP off button right here. And if I press that, which I've actually had it off this entire time here, let's just come to a stop. There's no one behind me. Um, let's see. No, too much uh, grip and too much traction from these tires. And the thing is that button's always flashing. Traction's never fully defeated. Oh, uh, so you can't really do brake stands? I kind of can. If you kind of go through the infotainment with this kind of secret menu, you get to the uh, service menu and then you can put this into dyno mode. Dyno mode turns off traction fully, but it also turns off ABS and a bunch of other stuff, which I want on. So I don't really want to do that maybe for like one or two burnouts and then turn it back on. Oh, so you can do donuts. And stuff. All right, cool, cool. One of these days you'll have to film, me, film it for me. Exactly, I will for sure, I promise, at least once. <laughs> So we already talked about these nice stock wheels, but behind them, we have eight piston brake calipers in the front. Eight piston on a, on a freaking wagon. You gotta slow down on the Autobahn. So now let's talk a little bit more about this interior. I wanna start with the cup holder. It is the cup holder of the year for 2022 as a 2005 vehicle. Yuri, check this out. You open this and then you press this button. Press it twice because it's kind of stuck right now. I think maybe some coffee dripped in. There we go. Boom. That, that's cool. Very gimmicky. I like that. Cup this, holder of the year. It's a cup holder too? Uh, no, that's actually a sunglass holder. And then so, this is a cup holder on the vent. Some young enterprising Japanese person put that on their side because there's only one cup holder in this car. 
And then how does this work? Uh, so just like a modern Mercedes, we go like this, pop it open, and then go like this and pop this open. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. And then what do we have here? A uh, wireless charger? Uh, yeah, yeah, more like oh, an ashtray. ashtray. Which and has never been used. Never been used. At least from what I can tell. And do, then- Do we have them in the back too? Uh, yeah, we do in the doors. Oh, hell yeah. And then the coolest part of this thing, Again, some young enterprising Japanese person did this like sticky, um, what's it, whatever it's called, magnet mount for a phone. I'm like, what is this? I put my iPhone on it. I'm like, this is brilliant. Like, this is actually such a genius solution because there's no real good place to put your phone in this car. Yeah, I guess this was invented before. Uh, it, that, it's like well, this was like when flip, phone, flip phones could fit in your ashtray. Exactly. Like this maybe probably had a car phone option at one point. I like all the hard buttons in here. That's nice. Exactly. So we have our hard buttons. We have uh, heated seats. Oh, and that's one other option I wish I had. Uh, cooled seats. This doesn't have it. That was an option. And then, sorry, I forgot one more option. These seats, they are really comfortable. They do have adjustable bolstering, but they don't have massage. Massage was an option. Okay, do those buttons on your steering wheel work? Uh, they did before the deck. So <laughs> the deck, you can get an adapter, but I didn't care about it. So these ones don't work on the right side, but the ones on the left side all work. So they control my... I like how your, uh, your gauge cluster and everything is all white. Yes, it looks really cool. And everybody, well, I don't know if you guys know, I am a fan of watches. Follow me on Instagram. I post watch stuff. I have a clock as big as the tack. How cool is that? Oh, That's yeah, a yeah. clock. Yeah, I mean, I, I literally <laughs> you hate... You don't care. I hate man jewelry and... Uh, Good for you, man. Yeah, so I love it. Um, my gauges are really nice and clean. I love everything about this. Can you get your this. speed and the digital display in the middle? Yes, you can, Yuri. So that's what I've been rocking all the time. How are these things? Do they pass? I've never tried, actually. Three, two, one. Oh! I feel like they've never been slid no, before. No, that's like original grease. Wow. I don't have to send this back to Japan. Yeah, you need some WD-40 for this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As for the rest of this interior, we do have hard climate control buttons. They are very easy to use. And then like Doug DeMuro pointed out, you have to press the zero in the middle and then it's always illuminated to turn it off. So that's kind of funny. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, everything works really well. Uh, Harman Kardon is fantastic. Infotainment is pretty good. I can upgrade the Sony unit if I want to, but oh, it that... does have a backup camera, which is cool. Is this a parking sensor for your backup camera too? Like... No, that's a parking sensor for the front. Oh, so and then the look, look back there, up at the top, oh. that's a rear parking sensor. Oh, so that was a nice surprise for me neat. too. I know, I didn't, I, like, I didn't expect to have it, so it's really nice to have. These seats are also really comfortable. Like you could cruise on the Autobahn or the 401 all day long. 407. 407. 407 Bond. Yes. And uh, I can confirm that at high speeds, this is very comfortable. And I have one last fun fact before I think we're done with this whole review. When Car and Driver originally tested this wagon in this generation, this was faster than the sedan in all metrics because of the weight distribution. So it could hook up more. So it was actually better on the skid pad, better to quarter mile, better everything. And this does like a mid 12 second quarter mile out of the box, which is pretty damn fast. And they have definitely wagon over sedan. Great job, great choice. Thank you. This is the ultimate family car and this is my dream car. So thank you all for watching. This is what enabled me to buy this. And this is perfect. Hey, hey, we gotta get to the price. How much more did this cost once you brought it to Canada? Dude, 25 grand all in. And I actually do have the original price in US dollars when this was new. Hit me with it. It started at $85,020. American. Yeah. So, I mean, this is 25 grand Canadian now. It's pretty good value. Seems like the guy who had it before got his money worth. Yeah. His yen worth. Oh yeah. And there's a funny thing that I found back here. Uh, this, this, whoever owned this obviously had children because look, he went to uh, Tokyo Disneyland. If you want your bag back, let me know who the owner is, but Tokyo Disneyland. How cool is this? Lots well, of little fun facts that I found in this car. I love this car, Yuri. Do you want to drive it? Next time, next time. Okay, okay, next time. I'll keep the traditional <laughs> lab of not driving Jacob's cars. <laughs> You've driven all my cars. Have I driven the Corvette? Not really. You've driven it when it was stock? <laughs> Watch that video series, because that car is not stock anymore. So in order to not tank the channel and make this a 40 minute video, I think we're gonna end it there. Uh, if you want more information on this car, follow me on Instagram. I'll just nonstop spam about it. Yeah, and let us know in the comments below who made the better family car choice. Yuri and his 21 CX-5 or Jacob and his 2005 AMG E55 wagon. Yeah, we spent very similar amounts. Yeah. Very uh, similar. How did this do in the uh, IIHS uh, side impact safety test? Uh, probably pretty good. How did yours do in the quarter mile? Not good. <laughs> All right.